Yo, it's your boy Chan with our takes. And I'm doing a prediction video again uh, for Tank Davis. Uh, did a prediction video before, and I was right. I was right then. I'll be right now. Um, I did predict that he would fight Frank Martin if he stayed at 135, and that's what happened. Um, I did predict that if he went to 140, he would fight Matias. So now, uh, Tank Davis is at a place now where he has no dancing partner. Uh, Loma ducked him. Um... Shakur ducked him, even though it was a finesse duck. But, you know, that's Shakur. He's a finesse guy. So he he ducked him in a finesse way. So now he has no dancing partner. So if you look at the rankings, the guy who is on top of every um, every belt as a number one contender is William Zapata. Now, William Zapata being sacrificed to tank right now is not going to happen. Um, De La Hoya is not going to do it. There's not been enough buildup. Nobody's talking about that. Nobody has mentioned that as a possible, as a possibility. So there's not enough buzz for that fight. So you got to look at the buzz because they look at the buzz. You know, they they see this is a business. Like I said, if you follow the money, you're going to follow the right fight. So they're looking at the buzz. There is no buzz for Zapata and Tank. There's buzz for Shakur, but we know Shakur Duck. There's buzz for Loma, but we know Loma Duck. So what is the buzz right now? As far as 135 goes, people, there's a small buzz for De Los Santos, right? De Los Santos lost to Shakur, but we all know that that was the most boring fight in history. And, and not just by opinion, by facts, by numbers. That's the worst fight in the history of boxing. So he doesn't have a lot of suitors, but it's also been said that De Los Santos is not going to fight again until 2025. So that knocks him out of the picture as a as a possible opponent. Then you have Moritaya. Moritaya is not ready for a Tank Davis fight. There's no buzz for that fight. He doesn't have a belt. There's no need for that fight. That fight is going to be talked down upon. There's no need for Tank to do that, especially with his six-fight deal. You got to understand, that six-fight deal means that he has to fight some big name. It doesn't have to be big name, but they're going to have to be viable opponents that bring in money. And Moritaya, Moritaya is not that guy. So what my common sense tells me is that if they were in negotiations to fight Lomachenko, that means that Top Rank and PBC were sitting at a table discussing a fight. Top Rank or Bob Arum is not the one who said he doesn't want the fight anymore. He's backing out. Neither uh, was anybody on Tank's side saying that. It was the fighter himself. It was Loma himself that said he didn't want to fight. Of course, you have to follow his orders. He's the one that has to get in the ring. If you say he doesn't want to fight, he doesn't want to fight. So now, when you have that kind of agreement and that date set, and then your fighter backs out, there's some kind of onus. There's something that that, that promoter has to do to make up for that loss, make up for that mishap. So that means that the fighter that Tank is going to fight is going to have to come out of top rank. Not only would he have to come out of top rank, he's going to have to they're going to have to bend a little bit. So who is that guy coming out of top rank that is going to be able to make up for that blunder that Loma did and, you know, keep the business good? It's going to have to be bearing check. It's gonna have to be Baron Check. Baron Check, the, that fight doesn't need a lot of it doesn't need a lot of uh, promotion because even though it doesn't have buzz, it's a it's a unification fight. And the boxing the boxing community knows, you know, people who actually follow boxing, they know that Tank doesn't have a dancing partner. Tank has to fight somebody. So they're not gonna be mad at a Baron Check. He's a champion, right? Of course they know they're gonna know the outcome. But they're still going to watch because it's a unification bout. And they know that there's nobody else that he could have picked. It's not like he's ducking somebody to fight Baron Check. So that is my prediction for 135 is that top rank is going to make up for what Loma did and give Tank Baron Check as a stay busy, also as a title fight to keep that status up because he's at a place where he can't go back. He can't he can't really go sideways because Baron Check is not necessarily sideways being that he has a belt, right? De Los Santos, De Los Santos is, a De Los Santos fight would mean that I'm trying to chase Shakur. And Tank is not chasing anybody. That's the cash cow. He needs to be chased. 
And the Los Santos, again, like I said, is not fighting until next year. So that's that. Now, if he does go to 140, it's definitely going to be Ryo. It's definitely going to be Ryo because it can't be Tiafimo. Tiafimo, there's there's no buzz behind that. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody is talking about Tank versus Tiafimo, right? And on top of that, there's not a lot of... Um, there's not a lot of buildup for the fight. And that fight needs buildup. Not because it's not going to do well if it doesn't have it. It's because I know the Tiafimos, man. The, 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 that Tiafimo Lopez and Tiafimo Lopez Sr. Those guys, those guys are overinflated. Those guys, they're, they're, they're bigger than what they think. No, they think they are bigger than what they really are. So they're going to ask for a ridiculous amount. I mean, I just know it. I just smell it. My common, tell, my common sense tells me, you know, by the way that those guys are. So... The kind of money that they're going to demand is going to take for a buildup. It's going to take to make sure and guarantee that that money gets made if they accept that offer. And that, that negotiation is going to be so tough, man, because those guys, those guys are ridiculous, bro. Tiafimo is ridiculous. His dad is ridiculous. I mean, I just don't see that happening without some kind of buzz, some kind of buildup. And so, you know, you have your possibility. You have... um you have that WBC, though. You have that WBC. So it's not necessarily Ryo. Let me take that back. Uh, the guy that beat um, Gary Russell Jr., one of the Gary Russells. Was it Antoine Russell? I think it's Antoine Russell. The guy that beat him, Poyo, Poyo, he is a viable opponent. I see him also being a candidate at 140. That's a dangerous fight. That's a fight that people will tune in to see. That's a title fight, and that's a fight that's easy to be made. I don't know about their rematch. I don't know if there's a rematch clause between him and Russell. Um, but if there is no rematch clause, I do see that. So between Ryo and Poyo, I do see a fight that could possibly be made. Um, don't be surprised if it's Poyo. Do not be surprised if it's Poyo at all. Um, but... The bigger money will be Ryo. Why? Ryo is more well-known. Ryo is... Um, Ryo beat Pitbull, and Pitbull had a name off of Tank. So if Pitbull had a name off of Tank, Tank was already aiming at Pitbull as a backup plan, and he beat him on a national stage. I mean, you know, the, the Russell fight was... was The Russell fight was, was the undercard of Tank. So that was a national stage, but that upset is not really being talked about as much as the Ryo fight is. So I would see Tank fight in Ryo at 140 and then Tank fight in Berenchek at 135 if he was to fight. That's my odd take. But I will say as a um as an addition, I do see Poyo and that's that's just bottom tier. So I'm not trying to give myself an out by giving three people, but don't be surprised if it's, it could be Poyo as well. But I'm going to stick with, I'm going to put my name behind Ryo at 140, Baron Check at 135. That's my odd take.